what is going on guys we're back at it with another one and i am heading up creek right now usually you see me going down creek to my mangrove spot by the by that broken up dock but today we're going after one of the most undesirable fish to catch in southwest florida that's right it's the marine gaff top sail catfish whatever you want to call them gaff tops i just call them sail cats but we're going to do a little catch clean and cook and we're going to see how these sail cats eat it should be fairly easy to catch one of these catfish i usually end up getting one each time i use live bait so let's see watch today i won't be able to get one at all and i'll just catch all snook today but hey let's see if we can get a sail cat maybe we'll get a few snook and maybe a few other exotic cichlids that live back in a brackish water so stay tuned We're at the promised land. I call this section of the creek the Amazon. Just look at it. You saw some clips before. There are not too many houses back here. This is just an all natural area. This little section right in here is where I catch a lot of the sail cats that we're going after today. So let's see what happens. We have a mix of pinfish and pilchards in a live well. It looks like we're starting out with a pinfish. It's the first thing in the net. That's fine with me. Get back in there and I'm just using my typical snook setup that you always see me use. Awesome. Tangled for a second. Come on now. What is going on? Okay, let's try this again. We're using a two uh, gamagatsu hook, 40 pound fluorocarbon. I'm just going to be really simple with this and I'm going to kind of just hook the pinfish through the eye socket there, right out the other side. And we are going for sail cats, so I don't think there's really any place in particular that we need to cast. Just plop her in right in the dead center like that and just let this pinfish do its thing. Let's hope we can get a sail cat. Maybe we'll get a snook or something else crazy. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, never mind, folks. Uh, I am not catching any catfish, at least at this first spot. Um, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's going for catfish. It should be pretty darn simple. Toss a piece of bait in the water and usually like that is catfish, but not today, not today. So we're going to be going to my snook spot with the hopes of catching a sail cat. And if it doesn't happen, we shall continue a video at another time. So I'm gonna snap my fingers and we'll be at my snook spot. Just like that, we we're at my snook spot. We're gonna cast right into my little mangrove cutout for some snook, and hopefully we can get that sail cat too. I think we got something going on here. Yep, we got something. Got a nice snook. There it is. Heck yes. Little guy. Thought he was a little bit bigger. He's like maybe 26 inches or so. Good first fish of the day. All right, I'm not feeling so bad about not catching that sail cat now. Come on. Come on, this way. This way, girl. Come on. Here he is. Little male snook, like maybe 25 inches or so. He is a chunky boy. All right, we're gonna let him go. He should be about ready to go. I feel his strength coming back. Not quite yet. Just gotta shake him back and forth gently here. Get the lactic acid build up out of him. He's gonna be a big boy when he's a little bit older. Actually, girl, when she's older. So, so thick and healthy looking. Come on. There he goes. Thank you. Let's get another bait out there. Just put a pilchard on and I think something's happening. He was jumping pretty good here. Yeah, I got something. 
and it's a hardhead catfish. One of the two species of catfish that are in this creek. This is not the one that I want to do the catch, clean, and cook with. These guys are definitely pretty nasty. So I'm just gonna get them off the hook, release them, and put another bait out there. Hold up. Before we go to the next clip, I just wanna let you know, I did not catch the sail cat on the day I wanted to catch, which was Friday. So I didn't get the whole footage of me catching the sail cat. You're just gonna see the part of me realizing it was the sail cat and landing it and being super pumped that I finally got the target species for this catch, clean, and cook video. And here's that clip next, so stay tuned. Literally just bump trolling here back to the house and I almost gave up on this video for a sail cat. And all of a sudden, look at this. Wait, I can't find it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. We got a sail cat. I got Johanna filming me. So I'll actually be able to complete this video. Later on, I'll fly up this sail cat. And then when I get back to my Naples place, I'm gonna cook him up. And we'll see you back. Forgot to show you the actual fish, but here's the sail cat. This is a pretty venomous catfish. These pectoral spines and also the dorsal spine right up top. If you get stuck by that thing, you'll be so sorry. It's not gonna kill you, but extremely painful. Look how slimy these things are. Look at that slime on the line there. Can't believe it. Last second, I gave up hope on this video, and here it is. When we get back to the house, we're gonna flame up. We got our gaff top sail cat. We're about to flame up here on our chopping board. He is dead, that's just his nerves going there. So I never actually filleted one of these guys. Just have to be so careful of these spines. They're as slimy as could be as well. Just going to make my first cut up top here. They have a really hard, hear that? So you gotta cut right behind that dorsal spine there. All right probably gonna have to pop these fins off gonna make a cut behind his pectoral fin and then I'm just gonna go down the stomach here well, I just removed his his spines on his pectoral fins because I couldn't lay the fish on his side so we're gonna find a place where we can cut right there is soft okay like I said I never filleted one of these before so this is an all new learning experience for me. I'm just gonna go down the backbone just like I would any other fish. Sorry if it's a little gruesome. They have a lot of innards, these sail cats. There's that hunk of meat. Not bad looking. I'm actually really surprised. This might be better than what I think actually. Do the same thing to the other side. Find where he's not armor plated right over here make the cut right there okay and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna go if I can get them right down the side just like that pliers are getting in the way and you got two beautiful fillets off the sail cat how about that? That meat doesn't look bad, guys. Not bad at all. I'm gonna discard the carcass real quick. Now we're gonna try skinning the sail cat. Like I said, I've never done this before. So I'm just gonna do what I do with any other fish. I'm gonna make a cut down by the tail part of the meat. And I'm just gonna follow that skin line all the way up there, super slimy. So just bear with me. All the way up like that. Wow, okay, I think I got the skin off in one piece. I'm gonna toss that. And there's that filet, not too bad. Some red in there, but it's not too bad looking. Just going to make sure that this is completely boneless. Got that out right there. Toss that. Got a little dirt in there, that's okay. And again, I just wanna make sure that this is completely boneless, this filet. So I'm gonna pretend like this is any other normal fish. I'm gonna make a cut right up in here. Cut right there. I'm gonna cut out this center. Cut back a little bit more. Get those little pin bones out of there. 
And here is your filet of sale cat. It really is white meat. I mean, it's a little bloody right now, but this meat is white. It's pretty surprising to me. Um, I think it might be okay, especially fried up like how I'm gonna do later. So you'll see me back in the kitchen in just a second. We made it to the kitchen and now we're going to cook our catfish fillets. Well, I'm just gonna do one fillet. Um, I'm not a huge fan of freshwater catfish, so I'm just gonna try one out first. I'm gonna cube it up so it cooks nicely all the way around. We're going to use Everglades all-purpose flour. You can find this in Publix. This is some pretty good stuff. And obviously we're gonna use some eggs for our wok that our flour adheres nicely to our chunks of gaff top or sail catfish. So let's cube this up. I'm gonna pull out the best looking filet out of this bag, the one with the least amount of red. I'm thinking is this one here. I'm gonna toss this one in the freezer. Hey, who knows, this might be really good guys. Who knows? But that's going in the freezer for now. And like I said, I wanna to try to get rid of some of this red. They do got quite a bit in there. So we're just going to cut in and just go down the filet like this, just to cut out any red meat, just like that. See that red came right off? That's the stuff you do not want to eat. That's the fishy part of fish. Like I said, I'm not a fan of catfish to begin with. So we shall see, it's coming out pretty good. I'm getting a lot of this red out. Okay. But that's good enough for me. I got quite a bit of this stuff out here. So we got a pretty nice clean filet. Like I said, I'm just going to cube it up. So I'm just gonna cut, uh, let's go like that big. Something like that. Boom, we got our cubes of catfish here. Nice thick pieces. Like I said, there's a little bit of red left in there, but it's not too bad. So it shouldn't be, I'm actually, it shouldn't be too fishy. I'm actually quite surprised how white this filet is. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I just noticed there's a little bit of bonage here on the side. Let me get rid of that and check yeah, right here too. All right, good to know. Never done this before with sail cats. Any more pieces? Yep, right here. Let's get that out of here. Boom, gone. What else here? I think we're looking pretty good. Everything feels boneless. And it's gonna be as white as we're gonna get it. So we're gonna use our Ziploc bags here. I'm just gonna put the flour in a Ziploc. I'm gonna put egg in another. We're just gonna do a shake and bake. We got our eggs. I got like three eggs left in the cart and I'm just gonna use the side of my stove and crack the egg. Get that in there. We'll just put the shell right back in the carton. I'm making a little bit of a mess here. Not too bad. I'm just gonna use the rest of these eggs here. I think there's only three left. All right, perfect. I don't think there's any shell in there. All right, I'm just gonna zip lock this closed and I'm just gonna scramble it, I guess, with my hands. Never quite done it this way, but I don't feel like getting a whole bunch of dishes dirty. Just got home from work and I don't feel like cleaning up a whole bunch of pots, pans, and dishes. So this is how it's gonna be today, just like this. This might be the wrong way of scrambling up some eggs, but so be it. All right. And in the meantime, I'm gonna toss my catfish chunks into the egg wash. Just like that. Oh, that's all of them. I'm just gonna zip lock it closed again real quick. And now I'm going to put my flour, my Everglades flour into the other zip lock. I don't know how much I need. Probably not that whole bag. That's quite a bit, I think. Let's see what we're going to do here. Oop. All right. I 
a little bit more. Okay. That's like half the bag. I'm not going to add any more seasoning to this flour because it's pre-seasoned and Everglades is pretty good stuff. I'm just going to keep that to the side. We're going to shake our fish chunks in the egg batter. Oh yeah, I need some sort of plate to put them in. All right, we'll use this plate here for, oops, uh, okay. Don't want to knock the, the hot oil onto the ground on me. We're going to put our fish chunks as soon as they're floured onto that dish to get ready for the frying pan. And I'm going to turn the heat up. I've only had this on low. Let's bump this up a notch. Uh, a couple more notches than that. Get it nice and warm. And we're going to take our catfish chunks out of the egg wash. I'm just going to shake the excess egg and toss them into our flour. I think I'm just going to coat these once. Let's see how they look after one coating. Some excess egg in my hand. I'm just going to put this in my sink for now and wash this nasty egg off me. Alrighty. Let's get back to our shake and bake and I'm getting egg juice everywhere. Wonderful. Okay. Let's shake this up real good. All the pieces are nice and evenly seasoned. Alright, I'm thinking we're looking alright. Yeah, they look pretty darn good. Look like little popcorn chicken nuggets in there. All right, let's get our fish out. Shake excess flour off. Put them right in our dish there. Yeah, they look pretty good. I don't think we need to double coat them. I think we got all of our chunks. It doesn't feel like there's any more in there. All right, I'm just going to put this in my sink as well for now. And let's see if this oil is hot enough. Good way to test is to take a pinch of the flour. Nope, not quite. It definitely needs a few more minutes to warm up. I'm just going to clean up my mess here real quick. And then uh, we'll get to cooking. I think our oil is hot enough. Let me grab some excess flour. Drop it in. Yeah, she's looking pretty good. I'm going to put her chunks in. I'm going to put one in to see. Maybe not quite. I think the oil is ready now. So let's put our chunks in. Give them some room. Yeah, it seems pretty ready to fry up. Not bad. Could be a little bit hotter. But I don't want to wait all day here. Guys, believe me, this is not my main dinner here. I'm just simply doing this for the video. Because like I said, I am not a fan of catfish at all. I'm just curious. I want to debunk the myth of these marine catfish, these marine sail cats, gaff top sail cats, of being bad tasting. You see mixed things. There's some places online that say they're excellent, and you see other threads of people saying they're horrible. We're going to find out today. But believe me, I went to Culver's and I got myself a chicken sandwich and some pretzel bites because that's going to be my main dinner because I might not like this at all, and I am not going hungry tonight. Let these puppies fry up pretty good. And we're going to wash our plate here with excess flour. We're going to put a paper towel on it for when these bad boys are done. I think our chunks are ready to be turned over. Yeah, nice and golden brown on that side. Nice. They're looking not too shabby. So far impressed with the catfish. Come on. There he is. All right, so this side of the pan's a lot hotter than the other side. Come on. Come on. There it is. I think, uh, nope, there's one more to turn over. There she is. Okay. I'm going to move these pieces to this side. This side seems a lot hotter. 
and we should have like maybe a max of two more minutes and this will be done these bad boys are pretty much done here let's check them out yeah nice and golden brown pretty much all the way around here i'm just gonna drop them right on my paper towel there try to shake excess oil off okay last one there just gonna put my tongs up there for a second don't fall in all right we're just going to use the flaps of paper towel and we're gonna pat this excess oil off these fried catfish marine catfish chunks and we're gonna give it a minute to cool down since it just came out of the burning hot oil and we're gonna try this out a little worried a little worried not gonna lie but it, you know, it doesn't look too, too bad. It smells fine, looks fine, so we'll find out in a minute. These chunks have cooled down for like two minutes. I got this, I don't really have any sauce here, so I got this, I think, sriracha mayo from Hong Kong. We're going to try this sriracha mayo out with the fish chunks. I don't know if that's the way to go, but we're going to give it a whirl. Put a good healthy portion on there. But this is a catch clean cook. I want to see how this catfish tastes. So first, I'm going to eat one without the mayo, and then we'll try it with the mayo and see which one's better. Wow. Wow. Yo. Yo. I am shocked. This is just seasoned flour, egg wash, no sauce. I'll tell you what look at the meat inside i don't know if you could see that well that's focusing in nicely it damn near looks like a chicken nugget and it tastes like one this is actually really really good what a shocker i'm gonna think twice next time about tossing in about tossing back my sail cats and they are they're absolutely everywhere they can be extreme nuisance while you're fishing live bait dead bait whatever even lures that catch them on them on top water lures trolling but man i think i'm gonna keep, uh, keep my sail cats from now on this is really good i am completely shocked sorry you know my mouth uh talking in my mouth full that's really good guys really good let's try one with the sriracha mayo You better put a little too much sauce on that one. It's actually better without the mayo, shockingly. This is really darn good. Just a little bit this time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I am totally impressed. Well, guys, I'm gonna finish eating what I have here, believe it or not. I thought I was gonna toss this away. I might even fry up that other piece that I have. I am completely shocked. So next time you're out fishing and you can't catch any snappers or anything for dinner, catch a sail cat. I'm telling you right now, save that sail cat, bring it home, fillet it, cook it, get this Everglades all-purpose flour that I use today and fry it on up guys, because that is good. I cubed it up now, so I don't know how a whole fillet would be. I would imagine it'd be okay. But I think the way to go is to cube it up and fry it. But man, that is good. Completely shocked. Please don't forget to like this video down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the bottom corner of your screen. And my friends, always stay fishing. And we'll see you on the next one.